Just Bob. Don't be scared. Peter, what the? Please be quiet, Bob. I'm knee deep in trouble. You have to help me. I don't have a messenger anymore. Please, give me a ticket for the mag train, quick. You want to use the mag train? Are you nuts? Bob, please. I have to get out of here fast. Okay, okay, of course. Thanks, Bob. Thanks a lot. You have to give yourself up, Peter. That's not an option for me. I gotta run. Not a word to anybody, okay? Okay. Good luck. Okay, hurry. I take the mag train to the airport. I need my things back. What the heck is this? A voicemail message from Mr. Huntington? He looks very agitated. Seems to be important. But I don't hear anything. You can only see his lips moving. I need your help. It's urgent. What's going on, man? You can read lips. I received a voice box message. The sound is missing. What does this man say? He says... Wait a minute. He says... Mr. Wright, you're in danger. Get rid of your messenger right away. They can locate you with it. What? What's that supposed to mean? Damn it. I'm such an idiot.
these damn bastards. I couldn't do anything. It wasn't my fault. I guess they really aimed at me. What should I do now? I can't go back. I'm stuck down here. easily get lost in here. Could almost think that this is a maze. I'm sure I'll find my way all right. What do you know? A map. This will help me out.
What do we have here? An old shoe. Hey, an old subway station. That's the stop Lafayette Avenue. Only that everything looks pretty much run down. Pretty. There are people. I hope they're okay. doesn't seem to be in the mood for a chat. Hello. Excuse me for barging in here. I didn't mean to bother you. Who the hell are you? What do you want here? Calm down now, Charlie. Good evening, my friend. You look as if you've got a problem. What brings you to me? You... You're the guys from the airport, right? Perhaps. I am... I'm Peter Wright. That's right. I have seen your face on the telescreens. You're dead, aren't you? Shot to death, escaping from Governor's Island. A Luddite brought to justice by the state. I'm not a Luddite. You're not? No. Or... I don't know, really. Oh, well, you're definitely in trouble, Peter. Yeah. Tell me about it. You have a problem with that? I mean... Because they say that I'm... Not at all. It's got nothing to do with me, and I do not want to get involved in anything. You have to do what feels right, and right now, you have to hide. How right you are. There was a shooting in the park. Somebody got killed, but those bullets were meant for me. Let's get rid of him. He's only gonna set the cops on us for sure. Let's get rid of him, Professor. I really don't know where to go anymore. Have you got a messenger on you? No. No, I just threw it away, that damn thing. Good. Got any other electronic equipment? No, I have... ...nothing left. Absolutely nothing. Good. You can stay here? That's a stupid idea, Professor. What are we gonna do with all these damn guys? They're getting more and more. Leave it, Charlie. The man here needs help. And he deserves it, too. I thank you so much. You're safe here. Take a rest. Great. Just great. Can I...? Of course. I would like to know something about Charlie. Why does he reject me so? Damn you, why don't you just ask me, man? And I'll show you why. Do you see what I mean? Come on, Charlie. Leave Mr. Wright alone. He's fine. Maybe a little misdirected. But okay. You know, Charlie doesn't like it when new people join our family. He doesn't like to share. Do you understand? He's afraid because he's already lost his parents once. Great. You just go on and tell him what a damn crazy man I am. Charlie, haven't we had enough of that? You have to learn to deal with yourself. You want to be an adult? Well, act like an adult then. Can that guy just damn disappear? They're after him, Charlie. Don't you understand? They could put him in jail for all I care. Charlie. Let it go. I'll talk to him myself about this. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. I'm just so looking forward to it, man. How did you get to know him? Charlie came to me as I was living under the Institute just after my dismissal. Came to you? Yes. He was one of the kids that were orphaned during the street fights in the Lower East Side. He fled into the subway system and was running about in the dark on his own. A six-year-old boy. Oh, goodness gracious. And then he met you. Yes, I was just getting to feel at home, and then this poor little guy suddenly came into my car in the dark. And he's been with me ever since. Then you are like a father to him. And he's like a son to me. 
don't know what I'd do without him now. I feel the tears coming on now. Can I ask you something? Of course, my... Can I ask you something personal? Of course. How long have you been here already? Hmm, let's see. It's got to be about 15 years now. 15 years? You have been living in this subway here for 15 years? Not just in this subway station. In the beginning, I lived in the station directly under the Institute of Technology. Somehow, I had a need to be close to it. But that stopped after a while. When I picked up Charlie, we moved here. This car is better. And in this part of the subway system, there are fewer rats, too. And do you plan to get old here? <laughs> I am already old. Well, not that old, anyway. Yet. What do you live on? You've already seen us at the airport. We beg? You don't have to be ashamed to beg. It's an honest and tiring job. Take a look at the criminals in business suits from the United Bank Trust. You've got a point there. But how do you do this, actually, without a messenger? Because nobody can give you money. The people have to take the trouble to buy us something. And some of them do that? Some do. And you never get in trouble with the cops? I think they have been given orders to leave us in peace. We are irrelevant. It is just a waste of time and money to bother us. They have got us under control as long as we are above ground. And when we are down here, they can't harm us. It's a convenient life. Then how old are you, Professor? Sixty. Why are you interested in that? Well, it's not so easy anymore for a man your age to live down here. So you were forty-five years old when you got here. Exactly. In the prime of my academic career. But you know, Peter, it does get better being down here as you get older. You get physically weaker, but at the same time less demanding. I need no luxury. Do you know Diogenes? He lived in a barrel. Isn't that an attractive ideal? I think I'm coming quite close to that. Subway philosophy. It's better than fighting against windmills up there. There is something else. Why does Charlie call you Professor? That's easy. Because I am, or better said, a what a professor? A real professor? At university? <laughs> are there any false professors? Although on second thought, you're right. I was a real professor who was replaced by a false professor. And what was your special area? I was professor of computer linguistics at the Institute of Technology for 20 years. Wow. But that's a pretty qualified job. How can it be then? I mean... You mean, how did I get down here? Figuratively and literally, down here. Yeah. What happened? Well, you know, Peter, I was part of the Mindscape program. We were dealing with improved AI structures, neuronal networks, and so on, in a project commissioned by the government. Maybe you know our first results from what's being applied in the Infobots nowadays. Sure, but the Infobots have room for improvement. <laughs> of course. They were just our first attempts for industrial use. We had got much further at the Institute. Then I did something that was actually fantastic. I wrote a program that was cleverer than I was. But that in itself is not a bad thing. Yes, but this program made me dispensable. And it took over my job. Quite ironic, don't you think? And an electronic tutor replaced you? Yes, it was an AI routine that is being used a great deal now. It was also used and further developed by Professor Emerson's people. And they were rather successful. You know this Emerson? Yes, of course. He was a fellow student and one of the most talented in our year. He was asked by the NSA to work on this Echelon 2 project directly after finishing his studies. He's dead. Did you know that? Yes, of course. 
plane crash, wasn't it? Yes. It wasn't too difficult to guess that. Emerson had always been a man with principles. He worked quite fanatically on his projects. And later on, he worked just as fanatically to stop them. It was foreseeable that this Luddite thing would kill him sooner or later. Why are you not one of them? I mean, one of the Luddites. The Luddites? You mean I would have enough reasons for joining them? Well, yeah. After all you told me, you would be the ideal... You have to decide. Either you take the path Emerson took... Or you do nothing. That is unfair. I have chosen life. This life? Yes, this life. I look after Charlie. I help people like you. That's life. Responsibility, charity, selflessness. Not hate and destruction and ambition and dreams of freedom. Dreams that can never come true. You are running away from reality. No, Peter. You are fleeing from reality. You cannot turn back the hands of time. And you can't force reality to change by means of bomb attacks. I did not do that. I... Oh, yes, you did. And you know that if you are trying to live a life that doesn't exist anymore, then you'll only neglect living the life you could live. And in the end, you end up without a life at all. I haven't got any kind of life since this system destroyed my life. That is what I have to change. Whatever you think, you will see that you will end up with nothing. I have another question as well. Can I ask you something else? Of course, my... I have... I have a question regarding this subway station. The cops never come down here? Oh, yes, sometimes. But they are very, very careful. The gas explosion. I've heard about it. Yes, a terrible thing. I told Yuri, but he's just so impulsive. The cops have cut down their searches since then. If they come down here, they bring heavily armed troops with infrared localizers and night vision devices. And then? What do you do? We use an escape tunnel and play cat and mouse. They haven't got a chance. Once they had a converted infobot with them, which rode the rails back and forward. That was close. So what did you do? Well, it was really an old model and based on an algorithm that one of my assistants had developed. Full of errors. I knew the software, of course, and the admin password. I delivered my wayward son a Philippic by means of basis commands. Then he traveled back like a good boy and registered that he could find nothing out of the ordinary. You mentioned several other men being down here. Yes, we have another guest down here. A Mr. Graham Oswald. He looks just terrible. Graham Oswald? Where is he? He's lying next door in the car. He's not doing too well. He's got horrible injuries. He told us that he escaped from Governor's Island. I have to see him. Now! He's been tortured. He's much too weak at the moment and can't talk to you now. I think we'll all be lucky if he ever recovers. You don't understand me. I have to see him. Now! Oh, okay. Go then. But don't strain him too much. It's about Graham Oswald. You know what he's accused of, right? We don't ask what anyone has done or why they come to us. He needs help, and that's what matters. You just don't want to hear anything, right? Why they get tortured like this in prisons, just like Governor's Island? Tell me, who do the Luddites really threaten? I, I would help anyone who is suffering and needs my help. What separates us from machines, computers, programs, and clients is that we are human beings. And that's what it's about, being human. That's the only thing that no machine will ever be able to copy. Yeah, maybe. Do you know how he got down here? He told us he swam from Governor's Island to the bay. I just don't know how he could have done that. Then he crawled into one of the massive waste pipes at the port 
and lay there after moving a couple of hundred meters. Yuri found him there. It's a miracle that he got out of there alive. Did he tell you anything else? He begged us to take him to his family. He believed that he'd never see them again. That is impossible. They are looking for him everywhere. And they will not let him get away again. And we can't transport him either. He's lost too much blood. And if we move him, he'll bleed to death. I have an... I have an... Thank you, Professor. No bro Mr... Mr. Oswald. Is that you? Ah, uh, Mr. Wright. Well, opened up all the moving boxes by now. Oh my god. I look terrible, right? This prison isn't exactly a holiday resort. Yeah, I had that impression too. Damn bastards. But it, it, it'll be okay. You need a doctor, and then everything else will be... I don't think I need a doctor. Oh, come on. We're gonna make it. He's lost a lot of blood. He keep... I want to see Tommy and Debbie. Can't we stop the bleeding? Doesn't look too good. Mr. Oswald, I've read your diary. Oh, yeah? Interesting. Don't you think? My god, I was such an idiot. I was so stupid. I should have realized it was all for nothing. Your diary was absolutely invaluable to me, Mr. Oswald. It was not all in vain. I was able to locate one of the target coordinates of the system. A coordinate which I got from the Bermuda platform. You... were there? I blew it up. But I don't know where the center of this system is located. I need a second coordinate in order to have a point of interception on the map. One of the coordinates is stored on my computer. You have to enter the password. What is the password? Get Tommy and Debbie here. The password? What is it? Double think. He's delirious. Double think. A password is double think. If you can make it to the airport, you'll find a private plane on runway 12. It's been fully refueled. Maybe you could take you to the center of the system. In any case, you have to get out of here. Mr. Oswald. Mr. Oswald. Is he? Only unconscious. Leave him alone. Hello? What can I do for you? Hello, Mrs. Oswald. Are you home? Mrs. Oswald? Mrs. Deborah Oswald? Yeah? Mrs. Oswald, unfortunately, I have to inform you about your confinement to the house. Please don't get yourself into difficulties. You have the right to remain silent. Please stay away from the door. Pardon? Confinement? What do you mean? It's not that hard to comprehend, is it? Confinement? Why? Who are you, anyway? Show me some identification first. Type 2 scenario, right? Shall I? No. There's also a child in the house. I'll do it. Mrs. Oswald, I'm asking you to cooperate with us to make things easier for us both. Thank you. Please comply with the following instructions. You have the right to move freely in your apartment. You are not allowed to use any communication devices or to open any windows. Otherwise... Otherwise? Otherwise, we will be forced to make use of firearms. Are the instructions clear enough? Mom, who are they? Did they take Dad, too? Be quiet, tell me. Did you understand that, Mrs. Oswald? Yes. Yes, I understand. Good. Now it will be your obligation to let your son be aware of those instructions as well. We certainly don't want your child to get hurt, right? Oh, my God. That's all. Number two, attend to the door. Yes, we can. Good. And what are we going to do now? We're going to wait.
He's not in good shape. I better leave him alone. Hey, Charlie. What's up? Can I talk to you very quickly? Oh, man. No. Quit bugging me, man. I wanted to ask you for a favor. Oh, yeah? Can you show me the way to my apartment? To your apartment, man? Sure. Why don't you just walk up the street and take the damn mat train, man? I mean, through the underground tunnels, of course. You know what kind of situation I'm in, don't you? And I can't possibly find my way down here. Who cares? I don't recall sending out an invitation. If you're gonna help me, I'll be gone much earlier. Interesting. But no thanks. Why don't you just walk off and leave us alone? There is something else. Can I ask you something? No. Why are you in such a bad mood? Am I, man? Yes. You are. Well, that's just my business. Of course. Is it really because of me? Because I'm putting you guys out? No, man. There is... Why are you in such a bad mood? Am I, man? Yes. You are. Well, that's just my business. Of course. Is it really because of me? No, man. Why is it... You're really bugging me, man, you know? Yeah, I know. But I have the feeling that you have some kind of a problem with me. Is that true? You're really sad, you know? Hey, what's that supposed to be? Check out Rodriguez, man. Oh, no, man, you can't, because he's damn dead. How about that? What? Who? Rodriguez? No, you damn idiot. I have no idea what you're... Wait, he's got a guitar. He had one, yeah. Oh, my God. God, I'm... I'm so sorry about that. It's always the wrong guys that get off, man. It was really not my fault. Oh, yeah, you Listen to me. You know nothing! Yes. I really do. Shut up, man! Okay, you can't help it. It wasn't your fault. You're really in a mess. Happy now? <sighs> Can I ask... No! About Rodriguez. Yeah, what, man? Would you like to tell me a little bit about him? Tell you, you damn jerk. Yeah, well... He was a great guy. Yep. Very often, he made me laugh again. When I, although he was a bit too much focused on... <laughs> Man, those were cool times. There wasn't much left on the Lower East Side after the rides. I was with the professor then, and he moved with his parents to Brooklyn. So how did you happen to find him again? That, that was damn funny. Really? Yeah, man. He was just trying to pull out some damn plants. Probably wanted to smoke him. And you? Well, man, I was a rat then. I understand. You know what a rat is? Couriers in the underground. Well... There's me running out of the waste pipe, and bang! We both fall into the water, all dizzy and with massive bumps on our heads. Man, it was fantastic. And then we... Damn, man! Because you liked your friend a lot. No, man. No. Now leave me in peace. He just didn't hear the police tank. I was barely able to jump for cover. But he... He didn't hear them coming. And reacted too late. If you would have heard them, I'm sure we could have both saved ourselves. Cops again. I can't believe it. Why do you say again? It was the damn cops who shot him deaf in the Lower East Side. How did that happen? The riot? A knockout grenade exploded in front of his damn head. And he could kiss goodbye to ever hearing any damn thing again for the rest of his life. And now he's dead because of police bullets. Damn. I just... Did you know each other pretty good? We grew up together in the Lower East Side. We used to play a lot at the Round Park bench on Essex Street. Man, those were cool times. Hey, what's that got to do with you, man? Why the hell didn't you warn him? What did you want from him anyway, man? He was supposed to read something off my messenger. Found out your damn message by now? The bullet was the message. Oh, great. Well, and his death was really damn worth it, wasn't it? Can I... No. Can I... No. It's okay. You can bet... Can I... I have a question. How can I get out of here? But you've just arrived, Peter. Don't you want to take a rest first? By the way, 
What do you want up there? Where they are looking for you. They'll probably put you straight under arrest. That's probably true. It's better if you only move around in the tunnels. Do you have a map for me? A map? Yuri will show you the way and take you where you want to go. I'm sure I'll find the way by myself. You can check out the tunnels. Ask Yuri, though. Are all of these subway stations still connected to each other? Yes, of course. There are just no subway cars running because of the safety issue. And... Are you familiar with the surroundings down here? Of course, but Yuri is our tunnel specialist. If you want to know anything, then you... I have... I have... I would like to ask a question about Yuri. How did Yuri get here? How long has he been down here already? An extremely talented young man. He was responsible for the programming of conversation strategies and world knowledge. He created, for example, the Conversation AI of the first Infobot generation. Conversation AI? Are you serious? Actually, he doesn't strike me as the talkative type. Then what is he doing down here? With that kind of qualification, he would immediately get a job at Central Robotics. He doesn't want a job at Central Robotics. Yuri has always dreamed of programming a cybernetic poet. I suggested that he write his doctoral dissertation on this topic together with me. If cybernetic poet? Something like that. And Yuri decided to come with me instead of continuing to program conversation routines for elevator inquiry. Actually, I can absolutely understand that. The design, them must be even worse. Could it be that he doesn't speak our language that well? Why do you think that? He's actually very good. But he doesn't respond when I address him. Mm, then maybe he's still too drunk. It'll be okay soon. He refuses to show me the way. Well, that's the sensitive Russian soul, I guess. Have you insulted him? Not that I know him. He seems to have some other problem. It's probably because of his shoe. He lost it when he brought Graham Oswald here and cut up his foot badly on the gravel between the rails. I understand. I would give him one of mine, but let me see. How could I help him? Thank you, Professor. No pro He's not in good shape. There. I repaired the shoe as much as possible. Well, thank you, my friend. Oh, that is really nice of you. Okay, come with me. I'll show you the terminal at the back of the tunnel. We have to walk through the dark a bit. Then you go through another door and into a second tunnel. You go straight ahead past the large sewer pipe. From then on, you will be able to find your way on the map. Thanks, Yuri. Say hello to my bots for me. Tell them I'm fine. Made it. If Yuri's description was correct, I should be able to climb up to our building from here. I can't get to it. I did it. Twenty-three damn floors. I have to be careful now. Tommy! Tommy! Mr. Wright, why are you in there? We have two men in our house. Two men? What men? Where are they from? They have black suits, and they don't have names. 
only numbers like one and two. And they won't let us out of the house. They are... Bad guys? Yeah. Did they say what they want? I think they are looking for Daddy and for you. Is your mom okay? She is scared and I'm scared too. Of course you are. Don't worry. I'll get us out of here. Did you find my dad? Yes. Yeah. I did find your dad. Listen, tell me. You have to help me now. It's very, very important. You have to listen very carefully. And then you need to do exactly what I told you. Can you do that? I will. Good. Now listen. Go to your mom right now and tell her that I'm in here, that I found your dad. And then you tell her to type a password into your dad's computer. That password is DoubleThink. Can you remember that? Of course. What's the password again? DoubleThink. Very good. Next, she will see a map on the computer screen. She needs to print out that map. Did you get that so far? Yeah. Okay. Then you, too, have to find a way to come here and meet me here in the floor toilet. Just make up some excuse, okay? And then? And as soon as you're both in here, we leave. And get out of here, Tommy. To see your dad. He's already waiting for you. Got it all? Okay. Then let's go, kid. Go ahead already. Good luck. See you in a bit. Okay, that's it. They're not swollen up enough yet. Can I, can I ask a question? Go on. Are, are you from the police? Perhaps. Then you are obligated to tell me your names and to show some identification. You can't just push your way in here and detain us. We can't? No. Yes, we can. <laughs> of course we can. Actually, we even have to. Don't be mad, Mrs. Oswald. We're just doing our job. And we all have to do our jobs right, don't you think? You know, my instructor always said, number one, there are two sides to our job. There's the nice side. If the clients cooperate, then we all just sit together, nibble biscuits, drink tea, and nothing's gonna happen to anyone. But then there's the other side, the side where the cleaning service has to be called when we're done. I would always prefer tea and biscuits, and I would really appreciate it if you also want to have it that way. Do you have something to do with my husband being arrested? Perhaps. Where is he? 
What did you do with him? We? Nothing. What do you know about it? Mrs. Oswald, I already told you. We're not here because of you. Don't burden yourself with the questions when the answers could possibly be unpleasant for you. Let us just wait here. It's better for you, believe me. May I ask you something else? Please. At least let the boy go. He's a child, and whatever you want, he has nothing to do with it. That's irrelevant. Unfortunately, he must stay here. Just what kind of people are you? How can you lock up a little boy? I stay here, Mom. With you. You see, he doesn't even want to go. A true little hero. You can be proud of him, Mrs. Oswald. I'm sure he loves to go to school. Knows his ABCs by heart already. And he's Mum's little sunshine. But he must stay here, under all circumstances. Do you have children? What? That's beside the point, and definitely not an issue here. Is it a boy? Why don't you answer me? Number one? Yeah. Shall I take over? No. You're a clever woman, Mrs. Oswald. You pretty much know when you're supposed to talk, and when you're not. Now what are we doing here? We will wait. And what are we waiting for? A visit. Nobody's coming here. I think somebody's going to come sooner or later. And how long is this going to continue? Until someone comes. Until then, you both wait here. You exactly. We've got all the time in the world. Oh, great. So it's all the more important that we get along with each other. And that can only happen as long as you don't do something foolish. What do you want from us? Nothing personal, Mrs. Oswald. As what I've just said. Please remain silent, and nothing's going to happen. What are you here for? It's not about you. We're looking for a terrorist. And we have reasons to believe that he's going to report to you. A terrorist? My goodness, nonsense. I don't know any terrorists. You even know two. What? Who? Are you joking? I'm afraid, no. Who do you mean? I don't want to spoil the surprise for you. At least let the boy go. He's a child, and whatever you want, he has nothing to do with it. That's irrelevant. Unfortunately, he must stay here. Just what kind of people are you? How can you lock up a little boy? I stay... See, he doesn't... You can be... I'm sure he... But he must... Under all... Do you have... To... What? Do you... That... Is it... Why do... Number... You... Shall... No, you're a clue. You... All right. I... Sure. How long are we still supposed to wait? I think I've already answered that. Does that mean you're gonna, like, move in? We'll stay until our job is done. But don't worry. We won't cause any trouble. Am I right, number two? Yep. You see... Number two likes you as well. That's a real compliment for you both. But number two can also get really nasty. Right, number two? Right, number two? Yes! Don't get on my nerves, or else. <laughs> you see? There's a little... problem. What's the matter? The... the toilet is stuffed up. <laughs> How did that happen? The pipes are old. I've called Central Services a thousand times, but they're just taking their time. I understand. So what now? There's a communal toilet outside in the hall. Can I take Tommy there? No. All right. Then I guess you'll have to shoot us. We probably will. My son needs to go to the bathroom. And we're going to the communal bathroom in the hall now. Understand? You're not going anywhere. Come on, number two. Let them go. Number five and number six already positioned in front of the house. They cannot escape. But you will have to explain this to the supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Don't make such a fuss. Go ahead, Mrs. Oswald. I trust you. So don't disappoint me. Okay? If you're not back here in two minutes, I'll have to... I got it. I'm sure you do. Well, go ahead. I have another question. May I... Ask you something else? Please. I haven't... May I... Please. All right. I... Sure. All right. Come on, Tommy. Mr. Wright, how's Graham doing? We should really hurry to get to him. 
Why hurry? Is he... did he... Do you have the printout? Yeah, here. Good. Tommy? Everything okay? Ready to climb? Sure. Up there? Into that duct? We can do that, right, buddy? And let's go. Time is running out. Mr. Oswald? Oh, God. Oh, God. Graham. Oh, my God. Hey. Tommy. Deborah. It's good to see you. I am so sorry. Don't worry, young man. Mom will look after you. Come on, Professor. Let them have a moment, okay? Mrs. Oswald, is he? Yes. I'm really sorry for your loss. Did he tell you what happened? Did he tell you what he worked on? What he found out? Where he was most recently? He tried to, but me, I don't really want to know. I've got to take care of Tommy now. Your husband didn't die for nothing, Mrs. Oswald. He did something really great. He had more courage and insight than most of us. You can be very proud of him. I'll make sure that his death was not in vain. What are you going to do now? I'm going to finish what your husband wanted to do. And what did he want to do? I'll explain everything to you when I get back. The professor and Charlie will bring Tommy and you to a safe place. You'll see to that professor, won't you? Of course, my friend. Then let's go. I have to get going. Good luck. I'll see you in a couple of days. Okay. I hope the airplane is still there, like Mr. Oswald told me. Made it. From here on, I'll just have to rely on myself. It's really darn cold. I have to warm up somewhere fast. <laughs> 